Hi friends, Ash is the new legend in Apex Legends Season 11, and I'm going to talk you through her abilities and how to use and master Ash in Season 11. Let's go through Ash's abilities and I'll give you tips as we look at them. Starting with Ash's passive, it's called Marked for Death. Ash can see the location of enemy death boxes on her map. She can also interact with the death box of any player killed by another squad to find that squad's current location. If the attackers are dead, it will return no surviving attackers. The location of the attackers are actually marked on the map with the red target shape, and this lasts for around 8 seconds. Additionally, for around 4 seconds, Ash is told the number of marked enemies. One thing to note though, is that the enemies are notified on their HUD, and it says position revealed by Ash, as you can see in the clip so they will know you're using your passive to find them. Here are some tips for using this ability more effectively. Number 1. You can see the death boxes pop up on your minimap. You can use this to get an idea of where people are fighting on the map, and this can help guide your rotation. For example, if you want to take more fights, then move towards those marked death boxes on your map. But if you want to avoid fights, perhaps you're playing for placement points in ranked, then you can move away from those death boxes marked on your map. Number 2. You can also ping the death boxes on your map for your teammates, and this will let them know that their death box is in a given area. Simply open your map and ping over the skull icon that you see. Of course, if you're in a party with your friends, you can also tell them. Tip 3. The death box markers on your map also show how long ago the enemy was killed. It's kind of like Bloodhound's footsteps tracker. Of course, you can use this to tell if an enemy is likely to be in that same area. For example, if the time is small, like 1 second, it's highly likely the enemy team is still there, so you know to be prepared for a fight. I recommend using Ash almost as a recon legend in this situation, and it's a good idea to check your map every time you rotate to an area, because if there's a fresh death box there, you can use that as an indicator to guess if there'll be teams there. Tip 4. A final tip for the passive that not many people know is that you can use it on your own team's death box. Let's say your teammate dies and you grab their banner. You can use your ability to see where the team is that killed them, and you can then use this information either to push that team and pick up some easy kills if you know they're weak, or to move to a safer place to respawn your teammate. So those are just some useful tips, and I would definitely say make use of this passive as much as possible because there's no cooldown, and it's useful in pubs but also super useful in ranked. Let's move on to Ash's tactical. It's called Arc Snare. Throw a spinning snare that damages and tethers the first enemy that gets too close. Unlike other projectiles, this moves in a straight line and can travel a large distance over several hundred meters, but the travel speed is very slow. The radius is 4 meters. The first enemy to enter that radius takes 10 damage, and is snared for around 3 seconds. The damage is also doubled if you get a direct hit with the Arc Snare. The snare effect itself lasts up to 5 seconds if no target is snared, after which point it will then disappear, and you have to wait 25 seconds for the cooldown before you can use it again. Let's look at some tips to use this tactical more effectively. Tip number 1. The projectile speed of the snare is slower than other throwables, so my tip is to always throw the snare first, and then spam grenades and thermites like you would with a horizon ult. If an enemy gets trapped, they can't move far so you've got a good chance with hitting those nades. Like I said though, because the snare moves slower, you want to throw that first, so by the time it gets there and catches the enemy, your nades will then be able to land and actually hit. For arc stars, I suggest waiting a little bit till the enemy is actually trapped, because this can actually help you get a stick with the arc star. Tip 2. While the snare looks like an arc star, you don't need to physically hit someone with it. There is a 4 meter radius, which allows you to simply throw it near an enemy, and it should catch them if they're within 4 meters. For example, you can throw it to the side of them, or even just above their head, and this is really great if they're behind an object. And as you can see in the clips, most of these are not directly hitting the target. Of course, if you do stick the target with it, you do deal an extra bit of damage. Tip 3. You can also use the arc snare defensively. Almost think of it as a short term Watson fence. Throw it to block an angle if you want to push an enemy in a certain direction, or even drop it down in front of you or behind cover if you want to buy yourself some time to heal up. It also works really well with Ash's ultimate, which we will talk about in a second. After using the ultimate, throw down the tactical to block enemies if they come through it. Personally, I think this is a really useful tactical, and as you can see from the examples, it can be used offensively if you're pushing someone, but also defensively if you want to block certain areas for a small amount of time. Finally, we have Ash's ultimate. 
the phase breach. You tear open a one-way portal to a targeted location for you and your team. The best way to think of this ultimate is a cross between Loba's bracelet, her tactical, and Wraith portal, her ultimate. When you press your ultimate button as Ash, she will whip out her sword. You then have to aim it with the indicator, which is a little subtle for my liking, although colorblind modes can help make this clearer. And once you've aimed it, then press your fire button and you'll trigger the ultimate. The maximum distance is around 62.5 meters. In case you're wondering, this is less than Wraith's portal because that goes 75 meters, and it's also less than Lothar's bracelet because that reaches normally around 71 meters. The portal is only one way and stays open for around 15 seconds. Again, this is much shorter than Wraith's 60 seconds for her portal, but still long enough for your teammates to follow you through. Here are some tips to use Asher's ultimate more effectively. Tip one, the aiming can be a little tricky. You can't always see exactly where you're going to end up. And I see so many people drop it short because of this and end up just landing out in the open and getting shot by enemies. So you do need to ensure it's landing on a surface rather than in mid air, kind of like Loba's tactical. But unlike Loba's tactical, you don't have that arc trajectory, so it's harder to judge. So a tip to make it easier for you is to try and jump a little bit in the air and always try to make sure you're landing it on a flat surface. Tip 2. There is a noise effect while using Ash's ultimate, but to be honest, it's not very loud, and it's much faster and less obvious than Wraith's portal or even Loba's bracelet. So you can actually use this ultimate to sneak behind enemy teams, whether that's in a raised position or on flat ground and simply behind them. I've done this really effectively a few times, and it can definitely help you pick up some easy kills. Tip 3. You can use the phase breach to get out of a trap, whether this be Horizon's ultimate or even another Ash's tactical arc snare. The ultimate gets you out of it pretty much straight away. Tip 4. Now this one's more about strategy, but you can use Ash's ultimate both offensively and defensively. In offensive situations, use the ultimate to push enemies faster, for example if you've dealt good damage and you want to take advantage of that. You can use the ultimate to get there faster and your team can follow you. In defensive situations, it acts almost like Wraith's portal, where you can trigger it to get your team to safety if you're in a tricky situation and need to move to different cover. In some ways, you can also use it like Wraith's tactical, because while you're in the phase breach, you become invincible and you can't be shot. So again, if your health is low and you want to get out of a tricky situation, you can quickly trigger the ultimate to get behind cover. Remember, Ash's ultimate is only one way, so you can't take it back like you can Wraith's portal, meaning you want to be a little bit more considered when using it. You can't just jump into a crazy battle situation that you can't get out of, because there's no portal to jump back through. I do really like the phase breach though, it's a great individual and team movement mechanic. Plus the cooldown time is only 2 minutes, which is way shorter than race 3.5 minutes for her portal. Overall, if we look at all of Ash's abilities and the way she shapes up as a legend, I personally think Ash is one of the strongest legends in season 11, and I'm a big fan. Her abilities kind of cover all of the classes. Her passive is like a recon legend, her tactical is like a defensive legend, and her ultimate is like an offensive movement legend. And because of this, Ash is not only fun, but great for ranked and competitive play, and I think we will see Ash a lot in the ALGS tournaments. In terms of playstyle, I would say Ash suits an offensive or balanced playstyle slightly more, but defensive players can definitely make good use of Ash, as you've seen in some of the examples and tips that I've given in this video. I hope you found this video useful with some interesting tips and facts. Don't forget to like and subscribe, I've got so much more Season 11 content coming your way. For now though, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.